Today I wanted to answer a question. Is the Victron 130 MPPT charge controller better than the Lee Time 100 volt 30 amp MPPT charge controller? And is it so much better that you should only buy the Victron? Now folks, I saw a post in a group where somebody was asking, should I buy the lead time charge controller? An individual came in and said, no, don't buy it. Get the Victron, it's 25 to 30% better. The algorithm's better, it produces more power. It's just better all around. And I thought, really? Is it really that much better? So since I'd already bought my lead time 30 amp charge controller, I paid for it myself. I decided to go out and buy the Victron. So I went out and I bought myself this $125, a Victron 130. That's 100 volts, 30 amps. And I believe they rate this at 440 Watts. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take, and I'm going to drain one of my batteries down at least enough that it needs to get some good charging in order to get it back up to full charge. And then I'm going to take that system outside with my OptiSolic solar bag, throw the solar bag on the tonneau cover of my truck, aim straight up at the sky, which I know is not gonna get me the best amount of power. But I thought, if you're gonna test an MPPT charge controller and whether or not the algorithm's any good or better than one or the other, especially if it's gonna get 25% more power, which I think we all know that's not true. I thought, well, that's the best way to do it. We've got some bit of haze in the sky, the sun's not real bright, so I did not expect to get great power out of that panel, or any panel for that matter. So I threw the panel on the truck, I connected it up using some 20 foot MC4 cables that I have, and connected it through my Daihul solar panel breaker, so I could turn it on and off easily. And I wired it up to my lead time charge controller, and I let it run for a bit. And I watched how many amps I was getting and I did a few calculations myself and I said, okay, I'm at that time, I'm getting about 200 watts. So then I took my Victron and I put it right on top of my lead time charge controller and I plugged everything in and turned it on and I looked to see what I would get out of it. Well, I did seem to get a little more power. And by little, I mean little folks, as in maybe five watts at most, at best. So I began to really play with it and look at some settings. And I noticed that on the Victron, they allow you to adjust some settings and it comes out at 14.2 volts for a 12.8 volt LiFePo4 battery as its absorption charge. I thought, okay, maybe we're charging with different voltages. So I looked at the lead time. Well, it's set up to adjust bulk voltage, which is at 14.4. Neither one of them seem to allow you to make a whole lot more adjustments than that. Though the Victron does have an advanced or expert mode that you can use to make some adjustments. So I have to give a little bit of a kudos to Victron because overall between the two Bluetooth apps, the Victron's app did seem to be more refined. But otherwise, they're basically the same charge controller with some slightly different settings. And when I did my calculations based on the charging amperage and voltage, at 14.2 and 14.4, well, guess what? I got very, very close to the same amount of wattage coming from my panels. In fact, the difference was pretty small to the point that the best I could figure, the absolute best case scenario, it appeared that the Victron might be giving me 5.44 watts more out of that solar panel than the lead time. And I say might because I kept having to recalculate things and I was switching from one, one charge controller to the other with the same solar panels. I'd have to disconnect the wires, plug them into the other one, turn it on, let it ramp up, get to whatever it was doing, watch what it was doing for 15 minutes, then turn it off and plug everything into the other one and then do it again. And in doing that, there's gonna be a little bit of error there. But I will say, I do believe that the Victron may have been getting about five watts more power out of that, out of that solar panel than the lead time was. Not the greatest conditions, not the best test conditions, but it certainly appeared to get a few more watts. That is it. So let's talk about these two charge controllers, and I'm going to give you my honest opinion as to what I think of them both and which one you might consider getting. So first of all, from raw numbers, the Victron does appear to be ever so slightly more efficient, maybe. Five, five and a half watts at most. That's, that's it, folks. So 
25% better? No, not at all, not even close. Not even 10% better. In fact, about one to 2% better, maybe. That's it. If we're looking at buying them and we just wanna get that one or 2%, which could be very important to somebody, maybe you do look at the Victron. Let's take a look at the lead time. So the lead time is physically bigger than the Victron. It has a display right on the front with buttons that you can cycle through the display and you can easily change settings with the buttons on the front. It does in fact have a load port so that if you wanna be able to run a load, it's got one. And it uses a standard Phillips screwdriver to change the screws, which honestly, I like that. It's easier for me. My big hands, I can use this screwdriver, frankly better than this little guy that I needed to use for the Victron. Easy enough to connect plus the load and it's rated at 450 watts. The Victron is physically smaller. Probably weighs just about the same, but it's physically smaller. It definitely has smaller screws, so you do have to use a very small flat tip screwdriver to connect your wires to it, but that's kind of a one and done sort of thing, so it's not that big of a deal. Not an issue, really. There's no load port. It's got some lights on the front, but no buttons, no display. And I'm gonna give more points to lead time for putting a display on the front of their charge controller with buttons that you can easily make adjustments and changes and cycle through all the screens. Super easy, folks. And it has load, which I don't use anyway, so that's not that big of a deal to me, but if you're looking for something that you can run a load off of when your batteries are charged up and you got peak solar, well, lead time's got it, Victron didn't. Between the two, the Victron app does appear to be better. I like that app better, and you can adjust things and change your settings in the app very easily. Victron smaller, lead time's bigger. Lead time says 450 watts, Victron says 440. Otherwise, these two are very, very, very similar. They produce very similar results. Probably got to tip my hat to Victron for its one or maybe 2% better production out of the solar panel. But again, with my testing, I can't guarantee that you're gonna get that. The big factor comes down to, do you want a display and buttons on the front or do you wanna to have to always use the Bluetooth? If you came to me and you said, I'm looking for a charge controller, which one would I recommend? Honestly, I'd ask you a few questions. Do you want or need the display on the front? If so, by the lead time. Do you wanna just run it off of Bluetooth and, and have a really good Bluetooth app? Buy the Victron. If you want 1% better production out of your solar panels, you'll probably get the Victron. If you have a space that's very space limited, the Victron's smaller, get the Victron. The only other thing that I could say that you might have to consider when buying one of these would be overall support. Does Victron have better support? Well, I've heard that they've got good support, but I've also heard that about lead time. I've also heard both of them aren't good. So I wouldn't use tech support as my reason for buying one or the other. I would strictly go by, do I want or need 1% better production? Because I know I could probably get that. Well, the Victron will do that for you. But do I want to actually have a display, be able to look at it directly and see what it's doing and have some buttons that I can adjust and cycle through and whatever else? the lead time. And there it is, folks, blue versus black, which is better? I can't honestly say one's truly better than the other one. I think they're both great charge controllers. They've got great features. There's a lot of good about either one of them. I think both are worth having. So from my perspective, if one of them was on sale and priced lower than the other, I'd recommend the lower priced one. So there it is, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you to all my members for being here. I really do appreciate all your support, so thank you very much for that. And meanwhile, folks, I'll throw another video right over here for you to check out. Thanks again for watching. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.